Hey guys, it's Christine Austin known as Ivy Winter. Thank you for joining me for another Disney video. Today was a request. Somebody asked me to talk about the best rides in the 2000s. So I figured I would take a look at it as this. My favorite rides that have been opened in the past 20 years at Disney World. So nothing older than 2000. We're not talking the Haunted Mansions and the Pirates of the Caribbean and all of that because, you know, those are classics in their own right. We all love them. But when you remove the classics, what is left? What is the new stuff that is the best stuff that has come of the recent 20 years? So I figured I would go through these through opening day order. Um, so they aren't in an actual order of tops, but just going by the dates that they opened and what I think are really the best things that have come of the last 20 years. So we're actually going to go back to the first one in October of 2003, and that is one of my favorites that is also a bit controversial of being a favorite, and that's Mission Space. Sorry, said it, I know, I know. You guys are probably tired of hearing me talk about how great Mission Space is. I know that there are a lot of people who dislike it completely, and I'm not gonna argue about like why you should or shouldn't love it, but I think when Mission Space opened, it really did something very new. The experience was very new. Um, it was really exciting. I remember like the way that it was kind of, um, the PR and everything was super exciting about it feeling like you were really like an astronaut or an astronaut in training. I love that there are the options of orange and green. So you have two different options of experiences and uh, you know, intensity, which is not something many rides at Disney World do. Um, and now, obviously with the refurb, it's an even different experience. Instead of being the same one and less intense, you have two totally different videos, which is amazing. But in general, what a cool new concept. Um, whether you love it or not, um, I just think that as a ride, it is definitely uh, one of its kinds. And it's really, really interesting. And I think when it when it popped up, it just really fit the space, no pun intended, of Future World and what it was trying to do in Epcot. So I think it fits really well with the theming of Epcot. Um, and I remember just being absolutely blown away by the ride itself when it first came out. 2003 would put me at about 17 years old, and trust me, for a 17 year old, that ride was really thrilling. Now the next one I'm gonna bring up, it's also October of 2003, and this was Phil Her Magic. Now, hear me out. I realize that Phil Her Magic needs some updating, but again, looking back at how it affected things when it came out, it was actually quite popular when it first opened. And it's a shame to say that obviously now it doesn't have the kinds of lines that it used to have. Clearly it was a great enough attraction that has popped up in multiple parks, even international parks like Disneyland Paris. Um, so I think it definitely has this great appeal to all audiences. It takes you through some absolute classics. And of course you guys, I know it because Donald is such a huge star in it, even if he's partly a star because he messes up, but hey, I'll take it. Um, but I think it is a phenomenal experience. It is so much fun. Every time I go watch PhilharMagic, I see countless kids who are just so excited. They just light up when they see Ariel and the Lion King scene and they reach out to try to grab things and like I love seeing the reaction from kids and families even more so than my own personal reaction. Hopping over to April of 2006 over in Animal Kingdom we had Expedition Everest and it's hard to think that there was a long period of time where Animal Kingdom existed without this ride because I feel like it has become such a quintessential part of that park. Um, and to think that it was several years after Animal Kingdom opens that Expedition Everest open is kind of mind blowing because I just, I can't think of that park without it. And it is such a great ride. I mean, it still holds today for me, like probably top 10 rides in all of the parks. Just amazing theming, those queues are phenomenal. Yes, I know we have Disco Yeti now, Look, guys, I get it, but Joe Rody said there's not enough time in the world right now to close everything down and fix him. Um, and if you did get to see the original Yeti, you're very, very lucky. It's definitely one of the most thrilling rides on Disney property. It is just a blast. I've never been on that ride and been like, eh, I'm over it. You know, like I have done it multiple times in a row. It is always fantastic. It is always fun. Um, and I think really, really changed that park for the better. It really started to set it on a trajectory 
of, of just a really great part. Now we move forward to May of 2008 over to Hollywood Studios and it is Toy Story Mania, which honestly was the coolest thing in the world to me when I got on that ride for the first time. Um, I love the concept, the ride mechanics, just everything about it is so much fun. Um, I love how you move from scene to scene. I love the competitiveness of it. Um, I, it's just endlessly fun because it's so fast paced and it just moves so quickly. It doesn't like let up. It's just, just nonstop fun. I love the, you know, army men being involved and the aliens and like having all these different characters from Toy Story. And I love waiting for the vehicle to come in and taking wild guesses on which character is going to be on our vehicle and like at the end being able to find out, okay, who was it? Who was the high score in the vehicle? And then it's never me. Um, but it's such a fun, fun ride. Like I get off that ride just laughing every single time. The biggest smile on my face. And again, what a neat new concept when it opened um, and still so insanely popular that they even had to add that extra track and I think it will just it's gonna be one of those that as long as it's like continues to run well um, it's just always gonna be super popular now we're jumping several years into the future May 2014 can you take a guess Magic Kingdom Seven Dwarfs Mine Train what another ride that totally changed the park um, not to say that Magic Kingdom is not a fantastic park as it was but it changed the park in terms of helping with the expansion that we saw with New Fantasyland. Um, that's huge. And it added a kid coaster that appeals to adults in a way that I never really seen before. It's not like you hear about a lot of people talking about Goofy's Barnstormer, even though, yeah, totally fun ride. But it kind of isn't like, it's just one of those rides that people forget kind of exists. And then Seven Dwarfs came along and even I was like, I don't know how I feel about this. It seems like kind of a kiddie version of Big Thunder and why would I want to ride this? And when I finally got on it, I was like, Christine, you dope, this ride is great. And part of the reason why it's so great is because of the ride mechanic of the rocking. First of all, it's one of the smoothest coasters I've ever been on and the rocking definitely helps with that. And what I mean by rocking is the vehicle actually swaying back and forth kind of going with the turns. Um, and then the other thing that makes it amazing is that slowdown period in the middle, which I was unsure about before I wrote it. I thought like, that's weird. Why would you want to slow a roller coaster down in the middle? But it works so well with what is happening and going through the mine and seeing all the dwarves and that's just beautifully done. The only thing I would say to tracks on this ride is that I do think it's like a little bit short but otherwise it is such a fun, fun ride. This is May of 2017, which I cannot even believe it's really been this long already. I gotta double check this opening date. I feel like it was like 2018, but apparently no. You might think this is cheating because you might say that this is more of a show than an attraction, but I consider it an attraction in and of itself because it's amazing and I'm throwing it in my list anyway and it is happily ever after. The fireworks show we didn't know we needed but man, did we. Um, wishes was, I'm sorry, dated, old, cheesy, corny, done. We were over it, I was over it. Maybe you guys weren't over it, I was over it. Happily Ever After comes in, uplifting, awesome. Touches on all these movies, ones that we thought that Disney forgot about, but they didn't, like Hercules and Tarzan and Hunchback of Notre Dame. And, you know, visuals of Big Hero 6 and Up and Mulan and just like, touching all these amazing movies that's like, oh my God, yes, Disney, you have a huge library of amazing movies and you need to be showing them all in this fireworks show. And it needs to be an uplifting, not cheesy show. And oh God, what an unbelievable fireworks show. It is hands down my favorite thing that they've ever done. Nighttime fireworks wise, those projections are awesome. Um, granted, there's a lot going on at once, so it's definitely a show you have to see multiple times to really take it all in, but oh, what a game changer from the Magic Kingdom nighttime experience. Now all we need is a nighttime parade. Come on, come on. June 2018, Hollywood Studios. What am I going to say? Slinky Dog Dash. Now look, 
Do I think that Slinky Dog Dash is a better coast than the Seven Dwarves? I'm gonna say no. Now, I know that some people are gonna disagree with me on that. Maybe that'll have to be a future unpopular Disney opinion. I do think Seven Dwarfs is, for me, a better experience overall, but man, the popularity of Slinky Dog Dash and how it completely changed things pre-Galaxy's Edge for Hollywood Studios. This was like the first, you know, the expansion of Toy Story Land was really the first um, moment that we were like, okay, Hollywood Studios, you're coming into your own slowly. And Slinky Dog Dash is such a great coaster, such a great concept. Not crazy theming or anything, but it works for what's happening. It's such a fun coaster. Um, amazing at night. Guys, if you've only done it during the daytime, definitely do it at night. It's just absolutely gorgeous. The whole land is so gorgeous at night. Um, and the fact that it still has these crazy long lines even after Galaxy's Edge and everything that is open over there just proves how um, it's just a very universal family-friendly ride and I think that it has just done leaps and bounds for Hollywood Studios which for a time you felt like all you really had was Tower of Terror, Rock and Roller Coaster and Star Tours that were worth going for. It started to add something else. Now, you probably thought, Christine, you're going through your dates, you missed something. You went to Slinky Dog Dash in 2018, you missed something in 2017. And that is Flight of Passage. And I'm, I held Flight of Passage to the end because I think that it deserves to be mentioned as one of the best rides on Disney property. And it was, until recently, my favorite ride on Disney property. Um, Flight of Passage did something phenomenal. It took an IP, that a lot of people didn't really care about, myself included. I've watched the movie once in theaters. Can't tell you much about what it's about other than it's pretty much Fern Gully meets uh, Pocahontas meets Dances with Wolves, except 3D and too long. But it took an IP that a lot of people don't have much of the uh, emotional connection with, though some people do. There are hardcore Avatar fans out there. Bless you, I hear you, I see you. Um, but realistically, the greater audience does not have a connection with it, the same as, say, Star Wars. And it made an amazing ride that people kept coming back to over and over because it didn't matter what the IP was, it was about the experience just so happened that it has an avatar packaging over it. And look, they made it a beautiful ride with Avatar. Um, it's, it's a beautiful, to me, emotional experience. And there are so many things about this ride that were just mind blowing to me. Um, the actual vehicle that you're on is so unique. Um, the experience of being on the Banshee, feeling it breathe, when I realized you could feel the breathing, I died inside of happiness. I was like, this is amazing. What a great little detail that I feel like Disney would do, but I don't necessarily think that if this ride belonged in another theme park somewhere that someone else would do, you know what I mean? And it's thrilling, it's beautiful, it has its crazy fast moments and it's like little like fake outs and these dives that like you're not even dropping but you feel like you're dropping and man Disney's so good about messing with your senses in that way. And then that moment in the caves where everything slows down and you're just really looking at the beauty of what you're seeing. And like that's that moment where you go, wow, this, this ride is incredible. Like they, ugh. And then just everything leading up to the end. It's like a four minute ride. You know, do I wish it could be longer? Sure. Um, but I just, the way that they do all of it, I love the lights in the beginning so that you can't really see the screen rising to the 3D screen. Like they do a great job of hiding certain aspects. Um, and yes, if you look around, you will see other people on the ride with you. Don't look around. If it's like your first or even second or third time, don't look around. Save that for later. It's more fun to just be immersed in the video that is happening. Um, but I get off that ride every time. Just the biggest grin, just the biggest smile. And again, it's, it's an experience where I love hearing other people experience it for the first time. Like, that brings me joy because I love it so much and I love hearing other people just like freak out and get excited and laugh and you know, just get into the moment. That said, the best ride that has come out in the past 20 years is one that just came out. 
and it's Rise of the Resistance. And I know some of you are probably like, I roll, oh my gosh, everyone says Rise of the Resistance is so great, and I don't know. I, I can't sit here and just be a contrarian for the sake of being a contrarian. I think it is one of the most unbelievable ride experiences I've ever had in my life, and experience is the key word that I like to hone in on. Um, because it is more than the ride itself. It is everything building up to it. It is the pre-show. It is the transport experience. It is the cast members playing their roles. Um, it is getting on a Star Destroyer and just like, oh, I'm on a Star Destroyer. You know, like there are just, there are just things about it as a Star Wars fan that are amazing. But I think even if you aren't a Star Wars fan that you could super appreciate, because they do tap into the things that like you would know, even if you never watched Star Wars or a Star War, as people like to call it, in your life, you would there'd be things that you would understand from what you're seeing because they're so um, pervasive in pop culture. Um, and then when you actually get on the ride and how that happens, and just the rooms that you go through and. Guys, I mean, I, I can't, like my brain, just thinking about the ride, just like, it's like little fireworks going off in my brain because I think about all the different experiences that you have and it's it's so crazy how they put this together um, and, and so unbelievable. And I think really raises the bar for every theme park out there to, to try and beat. Um, so for me, Rise of the Resistance, which came out in December of 2019, I was really lucky to ride the second day it was open, um, is right now the best ride that we've seen in the last 20 years and the best ride on Disney World property and probably the best ride I've been on, period. We're talking universal at all, you know? So those are what I think are the top rides of the past 20 years. I appreciate you going through the list with me. I wonder if there's some that I missed that you think should have been on the list. I didn't want to like obviously include everything. I really wanted to pinpoint the best ones. Um, but if you think I missed something that came out between 2000 and now, let me know in the comments below. If you like this video, then like it. If you like me, you should subscribe and make videos every single week. Thank you for joining me. I hope you're safe and well and staying at home and doing your part. Thank you so much for watching. And as always, have a great rest of the day. Bye.